A few hours passed, and his tongue started to become chapped due to drinking seawater. He could also smell the pungent odor around him, he suspected these were the decomposed bodies of his colleagues. Those around him were so quiet that he could hear even the slightest sounds, he could also hear the fish feasting on the bodies of his colleagues. Meanwhile, the dive support vessel that was taken by their company has arrived, this is a professional deep sea salvage company, they were paid to retrieve the bodies of their crew members, they are professional deep divers, they have enough experience and complete with equipment so they can go to the 100 feet deep sea. Their team is made up of six professional deep sea divers. They know that the retrieval operation they will do will not be easy, because the ship is upside down, and the soil and mud have been submerged, so this is caused by the turbidity of the water at the bottom, so they know that it would be difficult for them to see the bottom. They divided the six divers into two teams, three of them in a team. Dive team one was on the other side when the ship went. Dive Team 2 was Nico Van Heerden, Andre Erasmus, and Daryl Oes Chuizen, and a supervisor who is on the top of the ship. He is monitored through a camera and microphone. He will act as an eye if he sees something strange. The camera is on Nico's head. The Dive Team 2 took a long time to open the two bars that door. When they opened it, they were surprised because of a lot of mud that opened up to them. It was difficult for them to see because the inside of the ship was dark and the things were floating, like chairs and tables, they avoided the floating furniture. And they slowly explored the ship, they recovered four bodies. Meanwhile, Nico entered the door to the main deck, this entrance was small so he also had a little trouble while he was swimming. Someone suddenly grabbed him, and Nico was terrified because he thought a big fish passed him but he ignored it and went straight to swimming because the divers thought that everyone on board the ship was already dead, so it didn't even occur to Nico that the person holding him was a living person. So what Harrison did was hit the wall again and again, in case, the divers couldn't hear him, then while he was hitting the wall, he saw a diver swimming again, the diver swam so fast, he couldn't reach to hold him, he seemed to be losing hope, meanwhile, their supervisor Nico was upstairs checking the videos and he saw the hand that grabbed to Nico, so he shouted into the microphone that there is still life there is still life, come back. So they went back where they went and here they saw Harrison, they were shocked because Harrison was alive, because in this deep sea, no one can live without diving equipment, even the divers only go as deep as possible of them is 130 feet and they cannot last more than 20 minutes at 100 feet. Meanwhile, when they saw Harrison, they were just right, because the air pocket that Harrison was staying in was about to run out of oxygen. Because Harrison has been under the sea for 60 hours, if the divers don't come immediately, he could have carbon dioxide build up in his body, a condition called hypercapnia the effect of which is dizziness, headache, unconsciousness, and the most intense is the seashore. Exactly right, because Harrison started experiencing dizziness so the divers immediately gave him oxygen, then poured hot water on him to raise his temperature. Meanwhile, the medical experts are ready upstairs. Case there is one more problem that Harrison will face, and this is decompression sickness. What is decompression sickness? When divers go to the deepest part of the sea, the pressure changes, and the nitrogen goes to the tissues. When they come up, the pressure will change again, so the nitrogen will come out of the tissue and go into the blood and cause neurological problems or cardiac arrest because nitrogen is not needed by the body, so he was given oxygen inside first. Twenty minutes later they gave him a diving helmet and he got on the diving bell, and they slowly lifted it. When he was on the ship, he knew that he had only been under the sea for 12 hours. What he didn't know was that it had been 60 hours he was under the sea or more than two days. Then what was done to him was put him in a decompression chamber for two days to prevent decompression sickness. The other divers at the bottom of the sea are still in the retrieval operation. They got the 10 corpses of his colleagues, and here they finished the retrieval operation. Harrison's condition has improved and he is eating energetically, he has also returned home. Every night he dreamed and screamed, he thought he was still under the sea, he had post-traumatic stress disorder, 
Then he didn't go to the funeral of his co-workers. Because in Nigeria there is a superstition that he might use black magic so he was the only one who survived the ship. He didn't want to be blamed for leaving his family behind. He remembered that when he was still under the sea, he promised God that he would not work on a ship forever. What do you think? If you were in Harrison's situation, would you be able to survive the ship upside down at the bottom of the sea for three days?